Hickok 45 here, and no, I have not joined the KGB. Looks a little bit like it doesn't, carrying a contraption like this, specifically the VZ-61. You might have seen this in the movies or the video games, James Bond, or somewhere. Uh, it's a machine pistol, more or less, and uh, we're going to shoot at some and talk about it. Now, this one is from Checkpoint USA. This is one anybody can own for about 600 bucks. It's not fully auto, sorry. Uh, it is semi-auto and it's in 380. And uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting firearm. Now this particular one is SBR, so we've got a shoulder stock, <laughs> quote unquote, <laughs> and we're gonna do a little suppressor action with it too, thanks to NC Silencer. So we appreciate NC Silencer dropping this by. So we can uh, do a couple of things with it that uh, that you might not with the one that you purchase. But anyway, if you're familiar with the uh, the VC61 and uh, this line of machine pistols, if you've seen these before, uh, you know, stay tuned. You might learn a little. All right, safety has to be off before it will look around. Didn't feel like it picked one up, but we'll see if it did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> All right, let me just see if I can hit something. <laughs> All right, just like a pistol. <laughs> it's two liter worthy. I bet I can shoot from the hip, hit that coffin. <laughs> or that. Yeah, it's empty. So, I mean, you can shoot it pretty fast, even though it's not fully auto. Oh man, yeah, this was uh, it was you know again developed by the by the Czechs and it uh, mainly for special forces and uh, security forces I understand, but it ended up in a lot of places in a lot of different countries, and copies of it, variants of it, you know, like like a lot of these kinds of firearms, but it was uh, it was also uh, with the, uh, the Czech Slovakia army. It was popular for like tankers, you know, vehicle drivers, that kind of thing. You know, in every army, every military, you have people who are their primary uh, uh, responsibility is not front lines, you know, infantry or anything. Uh, they're you know, involved in food service and everything else, but they're right there in the danger zone, and so they need something. They're doing a lot of other things, but they need a firearm that maybe is not you know a big old Garand or something, a large firearm. And so something they can uh, put over their shoulder, put in a holster. This was really designed to, I think, wear in a holster. It's small enough and just be a small pistol, really, a machine pistol. But if uh, you needed to uh, to go into action, you had fully automatic fire with this little thing. You know, these are 20 round magazines. The, the uh, 32, I think, had more of a curved magazine, not what I've seen, but I've not shot the 32 uh, version of it. This is 380. So interesting. Let's take a couple more shots with it. All right. One thing we have to do, of course, and you know, I've discovered that it seems to work better if you put the bolt down, put the magazine in it. Okay. And then let me put my ears on. VZ61. All right. I'm going to go out there to gong land. sure where it's going. Let me try something a little closer. Get the... Well, sights don't seem too far off. Either they're off or I'm way off. I don't know. I'll try the cowboy over here. It might go left a little bit. Let me get the... I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. It had to be a worthless machine pistol if it wouldn't hit a gong at 80 yards, right? I don't think it was designed for that, but they're really the sights don't seem too far off. I'm going to take a couple more shots over there. What have I not told you about it that you're dying to know? 
Uh, like I said, the newest version of this thing, which looks nothing like this one, is the CZ Scorpion, the Evo 9mm. You've probably seen it around. Uh, pretty cool gun. I think it gets good ratings. Uh, you know, the thing about this one that made it different was it fires from a closed bolt, you notice, even the full auto. And then the magazine does not come up the grip for a machine pistol. You know, so it's kind of an unusual uh, hybrid sort of uh, animal. And on the full automatic version, I understand it had a rate control device so you could slow down the rate of fire or speed up the rate of fire, which is uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Because rate of fire make a big uh, a big difference in whether or not you can hit anything with something. Like I, uh, as I've expressed before, I'm not as impressed with really fast rate of fire on, on something like this even. I've, I've fired some firearms like that. Uh, you know, the Mac 10s and all those uh, things. And I mean, by the time you get your finger off the trigger, it's empty. And there's application for that, I guess. But it's just incredible how much more effective you can be, especially with a little, a light, fairly light pistol like this. Uh, if, if you've got a little bit slower rate of fire, so it, it could be uh, you know, pretty effective, I guess. I guess. You know, John and I were talking about this. I, you know, one of the things, you go back into the Cold War era and everything, some of the attraction to firearms like this is, I think, is part of it. I might just be blowing smoke, but you know, you take the average person in most of the European countries, they didn't grow up shooting pistols, handguns, like a lot of us have. Uh, and and something like this that's fully auto would give them a capability um, more so than you or I maybe if you shoot a lot you know what I'm saying I mean I could pull out my Glock 19 or Glock 26 and I feel like I'm very well armed you know semi-automatic I'm, I'm very well armed uh, but you have someone who's never shot a handgun before uh, you know how hard it is when you first started shooting a handgun to hit something so something that was actually fully auto select fire it, it would it would be more valuable uh, to to someone like that i think it'd be more uh give them more confidence if nothing else and it would make them more dangerous you know if they never shot a handgun before as you know uh, think back to the days when you first started shooting or before you really developed any skill it's so easy to miss and hard to hit anything but if you can just spray for at least one magazine's worth yeah uh, might be hard to miss right just close up so anyway a little aside there no charge for that uh let me shoot can i shoot one more mag john okay 380 uh we're shooting hardball here american eagle and it is 95 grain ammo we appreciate that because you know 380 is uh it's not as hard to find as it was and uh we're fortunate in that uh federal helps us and sends us this stuff so uh, that's always nice we're very lucky all right that we get a lot of help we need it we need psychological help that's the one area we're not getting maybe we'll get us a, <laughs> a sponsor from the american psychiatry association <laughs> okay let's try a pot there okay sights aren't too far off John, I don't know why I can't hit the gong. Let me try a couple more shots at it. Maybe it's dropping more than I realize. Oh, oh, I brought the sights down. There we go. Okay. I figured out where to hold. Needed to hold on the bottom edge of it. I was holding too high. <laughs> It'll pump them out. Fun little gun and historical. And historical, uh, not necessarily hysterical, but it's a historical piece of uh, hardware. John has discovered that it's really easy. Well, I'll let him show you, okay? So we're gonna insert a little action with John here. Uh, and I will see you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm about to do what some people would call the lamest way to shoot a gun, and that is bump firing. Now first, before I, before I do it, I want to explain very briefly what, about bump firing, what it is, and then explain why I'm going to do it with this gun. So, first of all, shooting is fun, right? We all agree that, agree to that. Shooting is fun. It has a not as fun side of it, but it also has a fun side. It's the reason a lot of us uh, get into shooting. I have fun with it. Shooting is fun. 
okay take that a step further fully automatic shooting is also fun machine guns submachine guns it's it's fun it's fun to pull the trigger and fire a bunch of rounds really fast most of us agree i think that that's pretty fun also because of the laws in this country in a lot of countries fully automatic firearms are very difficult to obtain occasionally we will have them and show them in videos but that's not always the case it's not we can't just walk down to a shop and just pick one up easily All right so something called bump firing came about because fully automatics are fun and hard to get right so people do that because not because it's practical or tactical or any of those things just because it's fun and if it's done safely there's nothing wrong with it it's just a way to experience an aspect of full auto that's fun that's why people do it well so what bump firing is it's where you use the recoil of the gun to fire the, the firearm faster than you ever could with your trigger finger. I don't care who you are, you're not going to beat a good bump fire. It's, it's almost as fast as it can be. All right, so what happens is, um, okay, so I, all right, you have to trust me, I've already checked this gun, it's unloaded with a loaded magazine in it, but I'm also pointed down range, so if it fires, it doesn't matter. Okay, so basically the way that it works is with this gun, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my finger really stiff and I'm going to barely hold on to the grip. And then I'm going to pull with my left hand forward on the gun and it's going to cause the gun to fire and the recoil is going to push the gun back, but I'm going to be pushing that way. So it's going to very fast, just constantly be firing the gun over and over and over and over like that. That's kind of how it works. It tends to be pretty, uh, it, it varies on the gun, how easy or hard it is. Uh, of course, you can get the slide fire stocks and the Fostec so socks and things like that. That makes it much easier. But some guns are easier than others, and this gun seems to be fairly simple. So I'm going to try to do it for you guys. And uh, since this is a machine pistol, maybe give you some idea of what it looks like full auto. But I think the rate of fire you're going to find is a little faster with bump firing, actually, on this gun than the original um, select fire versions would have been. But let's try it and see if it works. Who knows? It might be fun. All right. Not a not a lot to hold on with this thing. All right, got one longer burst there. Oh, I got a head bag in my pocket. There's one thing about bump firing is you can't really expect to have much uh, control over it because you're not really holding onto the gun very well. As far as, I mean, it's, it's not going to be unsafe. I've got a really good grip on the gun, on the front part of the gun, but, the, but I can't really hold the gun down very easily because I'm not gripping the, the grip. So it might kind of go up or whatever, but I've got it pointed in a safe direction. Okay, try it again. Okay, let's try it with the suppressor now. All right, it's unloaded. That's all I need. Don't need my ears now. All right, it's pretty cool. Okay, if I can get this two liter right here. Definitely getting some suppressor blowback. <laughs> That's one thing about this gun. Man, <laughs> where it all just comes out the top. I get a lot of it back. Man. It's like getting, almost like getting pepper sprayed. But not that bad, thankfully. All right, let's see if I can try to get a longer one. I was getting some longer ones before when I did it. Let's see. Oh, now that was interesting. <laughs> See what happened there? <laughs> so, okay, so a live round flew out of the action of the gun. 
<laughs> that's a that's a first. I've never seen that in my entire life. Shooting guns. Alright. Um Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. That was interesting. Alright, try it again. Oh, that was me. I hit the You know what? Uh. This suppressor makes this thing so dirty. We had this problem the other day. I'm just going to call it quits. <laughs> so, all right. So that was a little bit of bump firing for you guys. Hopefully some of you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll clear this malfunction up and, and uh, dad's gonna shoot some more for us. Okay, thanks, John. John's better at bump firing than I am. I just, uh, I sometimes can get the knack of it and other times I can't. So it's, it's just kind of a, you got to hold your mouth right, your finger right, and, and get it right to, to get it to work. But uh, anyway, he's so right about that suppressor and how filthy it makes this firearm. We've uh, been dealing with that for a few days, and uh, I'm not surprised it started uh, acting up a little bit. So, And that uh, should be a little bit of enlightenment. Is that too strong a word? For some people that think a suppressor is just the, you know, it's the, the end all. You know, you just stick a suppressor on a firearm and you never take it off you know and the shooting doesn't change at all except it's more quiet well it's more quiet but it's a lot dirtier and you get a lot of blowback okay and then you get less reliability as it as you shoot it very much but but anyways we're gonna leave it on i'll take a couple more shots with it here and uh well i don't need my ears doing so let's put one in the chamber see if it's uh if it's gonna work here and regular fire mode <laughs> oh maybe i can hit the gong with a suppressed i can hear it if i can hit it oh there we go oh, Shells are hitting me. I don't know if y'all can hear them. It's funny. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm having too much fun, even though I'm missing. Oh, there's a two liter. Let's quietly hit it. <laughs> quietly take him out. If you notice in those cases, they go whoo, spinning up into the air. The, uh, the first time I fired this thing, I was out here by myself and I fired at something there and I heard that and I had the suppressor on and then I fired it again and I thought, wow, how am I getting these crazy ricochets? Because it sounded like a bullet was going, shoo, you know, taking off on me or something. And even when I hit the dirt over there, so it just didn't make sense until I realized what was happening. It's a, it's a very <laughs> interesting design. Oh man, they sing to you. All right, got a full mag, so we've got to empty it, all right? Okay. Malfunction. See, it's uh, so dirty. Case didn't get out, round didn't get out. That's what you deal with. You wouldn't believe the inside of this thing it uh it's like cleaning a black powder uh firearm <laughs> after you've fired it with a suppressor so i think it's so dirty i'm just going to wrap it up maybe here maybe we'll put one more in it let's see try it one more time once a gun gets filthy it's no fun to mess with it all right what else? What else? Oh, pots. Pots. So neglectful. <laughs> and look at that. We're going to end just like that. If I had been in war, in battle, I probably would have met my demise because I had a malfunction. So let's clear it here and uh, get over here. <laughs> Okay, it's clear. Just uh, shoo, a lot more reliable without the suppressor, as we've discovered. 
So anyway, the, the VZ-61, interesting piece of history. And uh, again, in the semi-automatic version, it's, it's something that almost anybody can purchase. It's just a pistol. Again, this one's been, uh, you know, the paperwork is, is on, in on this one, of course. Uh, it's an NC silencer a firearm. Uh, it's been SBR. This is an SBR because of the shoulder stock and the short barrel. So it's a short barreled rifle, right? <laughs> this thing is a rifle, classified as a rifle now. And of course, the legal suppressor. So it's a little bit different than what you might just go pick up or order from uh, uh, Checkpoint uh, USA, right? So anyway, VZ-61, this is uh, probably as close as most people are going to get to uh, to owning the real thing. You might get a chance to shoot one sometime at a machine gun shoot or something, but uh, as far as owning one, this is probably uh, as close as you'll get. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, I guess I'd rather carry my Glock, though. Life is good. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. So check it out. Uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay? And also, we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it. Okay? Thank you.